as you know, <laughs> Rabbi Mark E. Dodson is one of the known rabbis in Milwaukee, a very close and personal friend, and a scholar in himself, in his own right. So you have asked me so many questions about Judaism, and especially about the second chapter. And I did send him the chapter also so that he may read it. And we have got, huh? you did? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. So then I'm in trouble. <laughs> and because now somebody who is a scholar and who knows Judaism inside out is reading something which is written by a third word, you know, student of Judaism. So I would like to hear your comments about that because the, the, the class may have done something. And also after that, Inshallah, you will have the opportunity to ask the question. Okay? Uh, without any further ado, uh, Mark, if you want to uh, introduce something, say something about yourself. First of all, Dr. Shah is very kind. I am, Dr. Shah is a scholar. I'm just a congregational rabbi who works in the vineyards of the Eternal in a, 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 a medium sized congregation here in Milwaukee. So I, I never claim to be a scholar. Um, but it is taught in the, the ethical tractate of the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, where Ben Zoma would ask who is wise, and his answer is one who learns from every person. And it is stated in the book of Psalms, from all my teachers I have grown wise. From your teacher I have also grown wise. I thank you. And I thank all of you for making sure that Dr. Shah is part of the Milwaukee community. So, again, I only begin with one more request on my part, if it's okay. Would you mind if I took off my suit coat? Sure. <laughs> thank you. No, no. No, but I might roll up my sleeves if that's okay. Oh. I feel better doing that. It makes it easier to teach. And I'm sure that I'm going to be able to do justice to to, I, I did, I, I, I read all of the chapter and I was very impressed. I learned all kinds of things that I had, that I had never, but I, I guess perhaps the way for me maybe to begin, it's a, a book that was written by a son of one of my teachers. It shows how old I'm getting now when my teacher's children are now my teachers also. Um, a young man by the name of Joel Hoffman who wrote this book called And God Said. Those are at least for me the key words as I understand what Dr. Shah sort of asked me to do today. And I would hope that as I speak, if you have any questions in the course of this, I hope this is more informal. And so if I get up and walk around. Don't worry it, about it. It's okay, all right. Because I might get up and walk around, and I hope you all you're all able to hear me, okay? Yes. Okay. Um, that in some way those words indicate that God communicates directly with us. That claim that we surely make in our scripture, what we call Torah or Tanakh. Um, indicates, at least as we understand it, uh, revelation, or even more specifically the theophany, but the revelation of God to all of the children of Israel to through Moses at Mount Sinai is the incursion ultimately of God into human history, and at the same time, our awareness of God's presence. So. Revelation then becomes the Word of God and our understanding of that Word. And for us, that revelation ultimately that is based on a relationship known in Hebrew as Brit and in English as Covenant. Now, as I read Dr. Shah's, how many of you, can I ask this question? Please, please. How many of you read chapter two of Dr. Shah's upcoming book? So I'll try to specifically respond to a couple of things in there, but make my comments general enough that, that you can understand. Dr. Shaw draws some distinctions between different streams in Jewish life. Um, 
there are in American Jewish life surely three or perhaps four major streams of Jewish life in America today. Orthodox Judaism, Conservative Judaism, Reform Judaism, and later on I want to talk to you about what you have in the book between radical reform and classical reform because those, at least as we use those terms, they're different than the way you're using it. And what you mean by radical reform tends to go into what we might call Reconstructionist Judaism today, when you were quoting Mordechai Kaplan. Yes. Um, now, I am first and foremost a Jew, but I grew up as a Reformed Jew, and I am a rabbi of a Reformed Jewish congregation. So that's of which I speak. That is who I am, and I'm going to try to say what follows as carefully as I can so that if a conservative rabbi or an Orthodox rabbi were next to me, I don't think that they would disagree with me, but I can't say this for sure. I'm also Jewish, so in all likelihood, whatever Jew would be sitting next to me would disagree with what I'm saying. But I'm going to do my best. I think that the differences in terms of our understanding of Revelation have to do with a difference in emphasis. As a Reformed Jew, I understand Orthodox Judaism as seeing Torah. And do I need to define terms again? Because I know that Dr. Shah defined them. And again, this is different. So what we call Holy Scripture, the Hebrew acronym is Tanakh, which he covers in his book. It's the three letters, and of course, uh, you know, Arabic and so it's a, the languages are very similar, but the, the Taf, the Tuz, the Torah, the first five books, the, the Nu standing for Nevi'im, the prophets, and then the Ch, the Ketuvim, the writings. On the other hand, Torah, though, has a tendency to be used in ever larger concentric circles. While Torah may refer to the first five books, as signified most symbolically by the Sefer Torah that is contained in the Ark on the Eastern Wall in any synagogue, Torah could also refer to Tanakh. Torah could refer to both the written and the oral law, both which we understood that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai, the oral law being the Mishnah and the Gomorrah, which together form Talmud. And in some ways, Torah can also mean our understanding of God's word at any time that goes beyond even those texts when we have issues that arise that 